What animal is the symbol of British royalty? Welcome back to Shelby on Safari, and in today's video, we're gonna look at why the king of the jungle might represent, well, the kings and queens of England, and see if they once roamed the United Kingdom as well. So you ready? Join the safari and let's get started. strange that lions, which nowadays are found in Africa and Asia, are a symbol of the British royalty. Lions did actually used to be here in the UK, and it wasn't that long ago that cave lions roamed the United Kingdom. They only went extinct about 12 to 14,000 years ago. Based on skeleton remains found throughout Europe, these cave lions were up to 25% bigger than African lions. And it's not just skeletal remains that we have access to to see what cave lions look like. Oh no, it turns out our ancestors were uh, quite into the home decor in the form of cave paintings. Based on these cave paintings, we can see that apparently cave lions had a tuft tail and even faint stripes on their bodies. And just like today's lions, they lived in prides. But what happened? Well, ice retreated from the Northern Hemispheres and a quaternary extinction event occurred. Now, it wasn't just the cave lions who went extinct during this event. Other big mammals like the woolly mammoth, Irish elk, and the cave hyenas also went extinct. So while it's a shame we don't have cave lions roam in the UK nowadays, we still see lions here in the United Kingdom in the form of imagery, specifically the three lions. And no, it's not just the English football team, but also within the royal coat of arms. But we'll get to that in just a bit. First, we need to dive back into our history books to find out exactly why three lions were chosen. Some sources suggest that good old William the Conqueror, who from the House of Normandy, may have used two lions on a red background as his coat of arms, and thus brought this symbol to the English throne when he became king. King of England on Christmas Day 1066. Okay, so we got two lions, but what about the third one? Well, fast forward to William the Conqueror's grandson, Henry II, who some think may have added the third lion when he married my absolute favorite historical figure, Eleanor of Aquitaine. And thus the Plantagenet dynasty began. You may recognize the name of Henry II and Eleanor's son, well, sons, but more famously, Richard the Lionheart. And King John, who if you're a fan of Disney films, may know as a cowardly lion in the Robin Hood movie. Well, some other sources suggest that it was actually Richard the Lionheart who started off this trend of using lions, for he used three lions on his seal, and thus this remained the seal of England until 1340. What lions species could be on the coat of arms? Well, it probably would be Barbary lions, which some English people would have been familiar with as these were the lions that were kept at the Tower of London. Once native to North Africa, these lions went extinct in the wild in the 1940s, with only about 100 of the subspecies of lion found in captivity today. All of these individuals are in fact descendants of the lions that were held by the King of Morocco. Now it's no wonder that they probably struck both awe and fear in the hearts of those that saw them. They are one of the largest lion subspecies and can weigh up to 230 kilograms. They have darker manes and are known for having quite the aggressive attitude. But what about today? Have the three Plantagenet lions carried on throughout the ages? I should say, however, that the coat of arms should not be referred to as a crest as the crest is only one part of the full coat of arms. The crest is the three-dimensional part placed on top of the helm. Now, with that out of the way, the function of the royal coat of arms is to identify the person that is head of state. The arms are used in the government and the administration of the country, appearing on all sorts of things, from coins to churches, on public buildings, and even on my thing of hot chocolate. That's right, the royal coat of arms appears on goods and products of royal warrant holders. So take a look just up here, just above Cadbury's. You can see, um, well, you can't really see it because my camera's not focusing on it, but you can see the royal coat of arms. And it even says on here, by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen, 
Coca and Chocolate Manufacturers, Cadbury, UK Limited, Bourneville. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, so it's fun when you go grocery shopping, uh, if you're silly like me, to try to find stuff that has the royal coat of arms on it to signify, yes, they have the royal warrant, they sell to Her Majesty the Queen. Fabulous, indeed. Now, in the design, the shield shows the various royal emblems of different parts of the United Kingdom. Do note that the three lions of England are found in the first and fourth quarters, whereas the Scottish lion is found in the second and the Irish harp is found in the third. Now, for my friends at home, I too was wondering, hmm, where is the Welsh dragon? Interesting. Apparently, Wales does not play a role in the royal coat of arms, as when the Act of Union came about, and I quote from Her Majesty's website, the Kingdom of Wales was already integral to England. Still a bit fun though, Queenie. I wish the Welsh dragon was on there. Or maybe a Welsh cake. Especially because, as you see in the royal coat of arms, there's already another cool creature on here, the Scottish unicorn, which is supporting the shield with the help of an English lion. So still today we see the three English lions, which seem to have originated back in the days of the Plantagenets, prominent still today within British royalty. Now, did you learn something new? If you did, give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend who also might find this bit of history fascinating. To keep your adventure going, why not check out the replay of one of my favorite live streams in which I looked into the myths and legends of the United Kingdom. Go and click it, it's right here. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.